Today you'll learn how to set up a remote desktop. So here I am running Ubuntu with the Ubuntu desktop installed here. I can run whatever I like on my remote server in a desktop environment. So this wasn't actually too hard to do. Um, for this, I'm using the Oracle free cloud server. You can get that on oracle.com slash cloud slash free. You don't have to use Oracle. You can use Vulture or DigitalOcean or whatever you like, really. As long as you can run Ubuntu on it, you can probably follow this tutorial. Um, I'm also using a Windows computer to connect to my remote server. So for doing that, I'm using Putty to set up all that. So um, if this all sounds interesting, you can follow along and do all this for free on an Oracle free server if you like. So I'm Alex from Ideaspot. Let's get started. So from our Oracle dashboard here, we're going to create a VM instance. For this tutorial, I'll call it Remote Desktop. And for our image and shape, we want to use Ubuntu 2004 here. So let's select that one. So there we've got canonical Ubuntu 2004, Let's select that image. And for our shape, we can use the micro AMD that we've got here by default, or we can actually upgrade that to the Ampere ARM based processor. So we can choose more CPUs and more RAM here if we like. So we can go up to four uh, Oracle CPUs here with 24 gigabytes of RAM. And we can select that one and go ahead and click select shape there. This is all on the free tier account. I'm using a free tier account to do all this. So you won't have to pay for any of this on the tutorial I'm running right now. And we just need to add an SSH key so we can paste our SSH key in here. So I'm using Windows and I'm using Putty to create my SSH key. So I'll just go ahead and do that now. So Putty comes with all these apps. The first one we use is Putty Gen to generate our key. So we go ahead and click generate here. Wiggle our mouse to generate some random data here. And then we've got our key. We're going to highlight all that. Just make sure I've highlighted this properly. So we highlight all that and copy it. We're going to paste this into Oracle a bit later. But first, let's save our key. So we're going to save our private key here. Um, just give that a name. You can name this whatever we like. I'll call it demo and private and save our public key as well. So let's just save that in as well. You can name this whatever you like. And now we'll go ahead and take this back to Oracle and paste it in. Once we have that pasted in, we can go ahead and click create. So this will say provisioning here. It'll take a minute for that to start running. So now we're up and running. We can connect to this public IP address. So copy that public IP address. So I'll just paste that address in there and our username is going to be Ubuntu. So I'll put Ubuntu at the front here with an at. So Ubuntu at our public IP address. Let's save this in as remote desktop. Save that in there. We also need to add the SSH key that we're using for this server. So we go to SSH here under auth and we browse our computer and get that saved private key that we made earlier. So mine's just here, Oracle private key, pop that in there and we go back and save this again. There we go. So now we should be okay to open this up and connect. There we go, that looks all good. Just make the font a little bigger here. Now I'll just run a quick update and upgrade on our server here. So up, apt update and apt upgrade. I'll put all the commands I use over on my blog, ideaspot.com au. There'll be a link in the description. So you can just copy and paste commands as I'm doing here. So this will run and it'll upgrade our server. So just wait for that to finish. Now that our server's all upgraded, we can install the desktop. So the easiest way to install the Ubuntu desktop is using task selector or task cell. So that is um, install task cell. Let's go ahead and do that first. Uh, press Y for yes here. So that only took a second. Now we can install the desktop. So for that, we use this command here. So do task cell install Ubuntu desktop and press enter there and let this one run. Now this does take a little while. So it'll change to this purple screen and you'll see that there's 983 files to do here and we're at 1% now. So just let this run through. So we are almost done here. So this did take a little while to install these packages. And we're sitting here on 99%. So that looks all good. We're on 100% there. And now we can install our remote desktop. So that is install XRDP and go ahead and install that one. That should uh, install in just a second. This won't take as long as installing the um, actual desktop. So that's all done. And now we can enable our remote desktop server. So we'll go ahead and do that. That looks all good. Now we want to add the remote desktop port to our IP tables in Ubuntu. So that is port 3389. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that to our IP table. I forgot to put sudo at the front of that line. So I'll put sudo there, sudo IP tables with port 3389. Let's go ahead and do that. That looks fine. Then we save that in with the netfilter persistent save. That looks all good. 
Now I want to add a user for our remote desktop. So I'm going to call my user Ideaspot. So sudo add user Ideaspot. And we want a new password here. So there we go. Let's make a new password. I'm just going to right click to paste a password in here. But we will need to type this password later. So don't make it too difficult to type. Um, we can fill in this or you can just leave these on default here for name, room number, work phone, all this. You can just leave that um, as default. It's no need to fill that in. And that looks like it's all done. Now I'm going to add this user idea spot to our um, XRDP. So sudo user mod uh, dash G XDRP idea spot. So that looks fine. Now after doing all this, I'm going to reboot the server just to make sure it's all working properly. So sudo reboot and it's going to close the connection there. We can reconnect with putty in just a second. I'm going to have to add um, 3389. So port 3389, I'm going to add that to our firewall. So under virtual cloud network here, let's follow that link. And we've got our subnet here and click the default security list there. And from here, we should have port 22 by default. I've got a couple of other ports open here from our previous VPN demo, but we're going to add one more here for the remote desktop. So add the ingress rule here. So our source CIDR is 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 slash 0. We're going to destination port 3389, and we're going to describe this as um, XRDP for our remote desktop. Click add ingress rule there. So we should see that in there on our ingress rule. Now let's head back to the instance we were working on here. So that's under compute instances. We were working on the one called remote desktop. So everything still looks good. Let's go back to putty. So in putty, we want to, let's load up that remote desktop connection that we had before. And we're going to go to SSH and we're going to make a tunnel now. So here we're going to make a local IP on 27002 on port 338. And we're going to forward that with our remote IP on 3389. So let's set this up in putty for our tunnel. So um, source port is going to be that one. It's going to be um, 127002 colon 3388. And then we use our remote IP there um, in the destination. So 3389 on that IP. So go ahead and put that in. Click add. Now it should like, look like that. So I've got local port um, 3388 on um, 127002. And then we've got our um, server IP 3389. So now we can go ahead and open that. So now that Putty set up this tunnel for us, we should be able to use Windows Remote Desktop to connect into this server through that local IP we just made. So Windows actually already has Remote Desktop built into it. So if we go to our start menu there, we can click search. And if we type remote, we'll find our remote desktop connection there. And we're going to connect to that local IP. So 127.0.0.2 on our colon 3.3.8.8. We click connect there. That'll connect, we click yes, and we should get through to our remote desktop. So here we go, and we just set up that um, that uh, XRDP user that we created earlier. So we just type in that username and password. So I was using Ideaspot with my password there, and we click OK. And this will go ahead and connect to our remote desktop. There we go. So we'll get our Ubuntu welcome screen. We can click through here. Uh, we can just click through here, that's all good. And start using Ubuntu. So here you can just use your Ubuntu desktop as normal. Under activities here, you've got all your, your basic apps. You can search um, your desktop here. So yeah, have fun with this. I did run into one little glitch when I was testing this. I did hit this pop-up authentication required for um, creating a color profile and you have to authenticate or click cancel there. If you wanna get rid of this pop-up, I'll show you how to do that. There was a blog post on Dev Answers that shows you actually how to do that and just means create this um, file with these settings in it. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first command, we edit this file called um, allow color and press enter there. And this is the content we need to add to that file. So I will share this on my blog as well and um, just right click paste that in there and we press control X to exit. It'll say save modified buffer. We say Y for yes and enter and that'll save that in. So that looks all good. And that should prevent that um, authentication required pop-up um, affecting your remote desktop session. So that was a pretty easy fix, but I just thought I'd share it with you guys. So that pretty much wraps it up. We've got our free Oracle uh, virtual private server running a remote desktop that we can use to run whatever we like on it. So hopefully this was useful. For other tutorials on what we can do with the free Oracle servers, I've done one on setting up a web server with AA panel, which was very popular, and also setting up a free VPN as well. So I'll put those tutorials up here on the end screen, but hopefully this has been useful. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.